Hello and welcome to our day in 15 minutes UPSC prelims daily current affairs by Neo IIS. Today is 12th February 2020 and the topics for discussion are the solar orbiter mission, super cam, national deworming day, blue revolution scheme, the integrated development and management of fisheries, COVID-19 and finally BABA coverage. Now coming to the first topic of the day which is solar orbiter mission. Now basically this is in news uh, because on February 10th the solar orbiter which is basically a collaboration mission between the European Space Agency and NASA to basically study the sun has taken off from the Cape Canaveral uh, station in Florida. Now coming in talking about this mission, the solar orbiter is a mission dedicated to solar and heliospheric one second. Now coming and talking about this mission, the solar orbiter mission is basically dedicated to the solar and heliospheric physics. Now basically it's an international collaboration between two organizations which is the NASA and the European Space Agency and it was selected as the first medium class mission of the ESA's cosmic vision of 2015 to 2025 program. Now it is the first mission that will provide images of the sun's north and the south pole with many different instruments. Basically six instruments will be there on board this uh, satellite. Now this follows the Ulysses spacecraft collaboration between ESA and NASA that was launched in 1990 and this also flew over the sun's poles. Okay, now what you need to keep in mind is that the rocket used for launching the satellite was a United Launch Alliance Atlas V411 rocket. Okay, so this was a rocket which was which has used which has been used to launch this satellite. Now coming and talking about the solar orbiter. Now as the name suggests itself, the solar orbiter is basically a spacecraft that will be orbiting around the sun. However, the orbit that the solar orbital will take is going to be very unique. Now before the solar orbiter, all the solar imaging instruments have been you know within the elliptical plane of the sun which is basically the plane where the planets are rotating around the uh, sun. But in this case, uh, the new spacecraft will be going in a pole to pole uh, orbit. Basically the new spacecraft will be using the gravity of Venus and Earth to swing itself out of the elliptical plane and passing inside the orbit of Mercury and will be able to get a bird's eye view of the sun's poles for the first time. Okay, so basically instead of going in a you know horizontal manner, it will be moving in a vertical manner. Now the solar orbiter will face the sun at approximately 42 million kilometers from its surface because if it goes too close, it will basically burn. Now it will carry four in situ instruments and these in situ instruments will be used for measuring the space environment immediately around the spacecraft and in addition to that there will be six remote sensing images which will be used to observe the sun from afar. Now basically it will take the solar orbiter about two years to reach the highly elliptical orbit around the sun and the mission will work in tandem with NASA's Parker Solar Probe which is currently orbiting the sun in a seven year mission and just completed its fourth close approach to the sun. Now coming and talking about the NASA's Parker Solar Probe, see the Parker Solar Probe is a NASA's robotic spacecraft launched in 2018 with the mission of repeatedly probing and marking observations of the outer corona of the sun and it became the first NASA spacecraft named after a living person. Now coming to the next topic of the day which is SuperCam. So basically talking about SuperCam, it is a laser toting robot and one of the seven instruments being sent by NASA on board its Mars 2020 rover. Now it is called SuperCam and the robot is basically going to be used for studying mineralogy and chemistry from up to 7 meters away from the ground of Mars. Now this cam will basically fire a pulsed laser beam out of the rover's mass to basically vaporize small portions of the rock from a distance and this thing would provide information that will be essential for the mission's success. Okay, now the super cam includes a microphone so that the scientist can basically listen each time that the laser is hitting the target. What they are trying to understand here is that the popping sound, the different types of popping sound that is being created when the laser hits the target, that sound can also give some information about the rock material and other rock properties.
Now, uh, the thing is that you have to understand five things under this NASA's mission. Now, from more than seven meters away, the SuperCam can fire a laser to study the rock targets smaller than a pencil point. So, the target is going to be very, very small. Now, this has led the rover to study spot that can that the rover cannot reach by its arm length. So, basically, there is also going to be an arm, but those regions which the rover cannot reach by arm length, then the SuperCam will be used for helping this. Now, the SuperCam looks basically, uh, you know, will be looking at rock textures and chemicals to find out uh, that from what material it has been formed and what sort of changes has happened, you know, because of water, the presence of water in Mars long time ago. Now, SuperCam will look at different rocks and soil types to find the ones that could preserve signs of the past microbial life on Mars, if ever there existed any past life on Mars. Now, for the benefit of the future explorers, SuperCam identifies which element in the Martian dust may be harmful for humans and the scientists can also learn how atmospheric molecules, water, ice and dust absorbed or reflected by the solar radiation. That also can be studied by SuperMars. This will, you know, make us understand, uh, give a better understanding about the Martian weather. Now, coming and talking about the Mars 2020 rover mission. Now, this is part of NASA's Mars Exploration Program, which is a long-term effort of robotic explorations on Mars. Now, the Mars 2020 mission addresses high-priority scientific goals for Mars exploration. This basically is to answer many key important questions on the potential life existence in Mars. Now, the mission is timed for a launch opportunity in uh, July 2020 when the Earth and Mars are in a good position relative to each other for a good landing on Mars. Now, coming to the next topic of the day, which is the National Deworming Day. Now, this is the news because the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has conducted the 10th round of the National Deworming Day. Now, talking about this, the National Deworming Day is observed biannually on February 10th and August 10th. So now this day basically aims at eradicating intestinal worms which is also known as soil transmitted helmisthenes among children in the age group of 1 to 19 years. Now children and adolescents are administered a single dose of a safe medicine which is called albendazole across uh, government, government aided schools and also anganwadis, private schools and other educational institution. So, almost all the education institutions are covered. Now, according to the World Health Organization, around 241 million children in India in the ages of 1 to 14 are at the risk of this parasitic intestinal worms or STH. Now, this basically means India accounts for approximately 28% of the total number of children globally estimated to be at the risk of the STH infections. Now, this uh, mission actually has been launched in 2015 and the NDD is basically the largest public health program implemented on a single day, reaching crores of children and adolescents throughout two NDD rounds every year. So, basically, the reach of these programs is massive considering, considering the fact that it happens only two times in a year. Now, this is implemented in collaboration with the Ministry of Women and Child Development and the Ministry of Human Resource Development. Now, NDD is a key inter, uh, you know, intervention in the anemia book Bharat as well. Now, its success and impact will basically lie in the convergence with the Swachh Bharat mission as well. So, now this National Deworming Day presents an opportunity to further policy uh, dialogue on health and nutrition as a way of supplementing efforts under the portion abhyan. Now, coming and talking about intestinal worms. See, intestinal worms are parasites that live in the human's intestine to consume nutrients and vitamins that a child consumes. Now, there are three main type of uh, intestinal worms or STH that infect people. These are round worms, whip worms and hook worms. So, you have to understand here is that these worms depend on the human body for their food and survival and while being there, they also lay thousands of eggs each day. Now, there is a long list of negative effects and dangers of these worms infection and since these worms feed on host, which is basically the human body tissues, it also, you know, includes blood. So, these uh, worms will also eat up human tissue and human blood. It leads to a loss of iron, protein, which will further lead to anemia, reduced oxygen carrying capacity due to less hemoglobin availability in the body. Now, coming to the next topic of the day. 
which is the blue revolution scheme integrated development and management of fisheries now this is a news because by realizing the immense scope of development of fisheries and aquaculture the government of india has actually restructured the central plan schemes under an umbrella blue revolution now the restructured centrally sponsored scheme on blue revolution which is integrated development of management of fisheries this was approved in december 2015 by the ccea with a total central budgetary outlay of rupees 3000 crores for 5 years now we'll come to the major components of the uh, central sponsored scheme on blue revolution scheme okay now these are the development of inland fisheries and aquaculture the development of marine fisheries infrastructure and post harvest operations national scheme for welfare of fishermen monitoring control and surveillance and other need based interventions institutional arrangement for fisheries sector the strengthening of database and geographical information system of the fisheries sector and finally the national fisheries development board and its activities now the blue revolution scheme which is basically a multi dimensional activities which focus on mainly on increasing the fisheries production and the productivity from both aquaculture and fisheries resources in inland and marine sector now the government of india has actually launched the fisheries and aquaculture infrastructure development fund that is the fidf on 24th october 2018 and there is a total of 7522 crore to basically assist in creating several infrastructural needs in the country uh, regarding fisheries development now the government of india has also extended the facility of kisan credit card to fisheries and animal husbandry farmers to help them meet their working capital needs now the kisan credit card facility will help fisheries and farm farm fish farmers to meet their short term working capital requirements the fish production in the country is growing at an annual average rate of 7% during the recent years according to the recent study that was conducted now coming to the next topic of the day which is covid 19 understand this uh, the world health organization has announced a new name for the corona virus which is covid 19 the who has chosen this name with no reference to any geographical indication and uh, you know according to who the name was chosen in such a way that it does not affect normal lives of the country at all that does not you know gives care to any country or any particular location now next we come to the next topic which is the baba kavach now the baba atomic research center has actually designed a new bulletproof jacket called baba kavach Now the jacket is to be used by the Central uh, Industrial Security Force, that is CISF. Now the jacket is capable of stopping a hard steel core bullet that is fired from AK-47, self-loading rifles, and also bolt-action rifles. So it will provide a huge level of protection for the personnel wearing this coverage or this bulletproof jacket. So that's all for today. For additional information, please log into our uh, Current Affairs website, that is www.newiscap.com. So thank you please like share and subscribe to our channel for more videos follow our website neoiascap.com for detailed content and monthly prelims digest also join our current affairs exclusive test series through the website and finally participate in the daily current affairs prelims infotainment quiz at our telegram channel neoiasprelims at 9:30 pm every day thank you